think everyone has a poem waiting for them. My little brother, one of my biggest inspirations for my poetry, is a reader. He has devoured fantasy, adventure, anything with epic battles where the hero inevitably wins and saves the day. You would never find him reading a book of Byron. But that does not mean he is not a lover of poetry. A few years ago, I introduced him to the classic poem Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley, a short poem filled with time and pharaohs and stretching horizons. He loved it. Now, maybe this will be the only poem he ever enjoys. I hope not, but it could be. But that is not the important thing. There is a poem he connects to that is part of him. My point is that inside everyone there is a space for poetry. And everyone you know has a poem waiting for them. Up until National Poetry Day of this year, I was the young Staffordshire and Stoke-on-Trent Poet Laureate. I, with the help of my local bus company, First Bus, managed to get local young people's poetry on a bus route. I think it's my job, and the job of every avid poetry fan, to get the disinterested to find their favourite poem. Because I think it's fair to say that there are a lot of people who are quick to state that they don't like poetry. They associate it with stuffy stanzas crammed with archaic vocab or wordy nonsense. And I suppose there are some poems with all of those things. There is poetry that can distance people, and there are poems that make poetry seem like a far-off, grandiose thing that no one normal or ordinary could possibly understand. But I'm pretty normal, and I'm obsessed with the stuff. I want you to imagine a wedding or a funeral, any big ceremony that means something huge in someone's life, and see a speaker, a family member or a friend, and see how they stand up and read a poem. And then people listen, and they listen because they feel that is the place for poetry. Poetry is important at the big stages in your life. It is used to put into words the high emotions that people feel. But it is also needed in our average, boring, dull, every day. In our school PE lesson, this is from a poem by Wendy Cope. When they picked teams for outdoor games, she and I were always the last two left standing by the wire mesh fence from Titch Miller. Or when you're out in the country, this is from Blackberry Picking by the wonderful, muddy Irish poet, the great Seamus Heaney. Then red ones inked up, and that hunger sent us out with milk cans, pea tins, jam pots. And it is also when you're out shopping. The fat black woman goes shopping by Grace Nichols perfectly captures what so many of us feel when we go out to buy a pair of jeans. It is in the mundane that often we find the truth. The use of poetry at these huge ceremonies makes many feel as if it is a medium only for the big issues, for the special occasions. And we have to be careful not to make poetry a chore. For example, the English and Welsh GCSE poetry exam that students usually take at the age of 16 has recently changed. Now, we are forced to memorise 15 poems, quick quotation from 15 poems, and for some students, this may be enjoyable, but for the majority, what a chore. It takes away the enjoyment, and most importantly, it takes away the free choice. And I think that's terrible, because for me, anyway, Poetry's main objective is to communicate. My first favourite poem, when I was very little, was Dog by Ted Hughes. It isn't a poem that addresses the problems of the world, and it isn't a poem that makes you cry. 
It is a poem, as the title suggests, about a dog. And why did I love it and connect to it so much? Because it reminded me of my dog. Because when I say communicate, I don't mean preach. I mean that someone could read a little snapshot of something, a relationship or a friendship, Valentine by Caroline Duffy about perfect, authentic love. I give you an onion. <laughs> or a wait for a phone call. Come on, damn you, ring me. Or a primary school class. The scent of a pencil slowly, carefully shaved. That's why I decided to get poetry on the buses. Because poetry provides empathy, and in a world that can be so cruel and hateful and sad, don't we all need a little more empathy? Buses aren't glittering or spectacular. They don't have the wow factor. But they're useful, useful and I think important too. But I didn't want to get any type of poetry on the buses. I wanted young people's poetry, local young people's poetry. So, with the help of my fantastic school, I managed to organise a county-wide competition called the Young Staffordshire Stanza. And the 15 finalists from that competition have their poetry on the number 18 bus. This is a quote from a poem by a competition finalist called A Grey Day. Because poetry not only provides empathy, but a sense of belonging, a sense of community, and beautiful things written by local teenagers makes people proud of their area, but also proud of the people in their area. It's just one bus route in just one place, but it's not there to make an explosion. It's there, so maybe, just maybe, a person who has said they hate poetry could stop and think, well, I quite like that, Maybe because of that, that person could continue to read poetry, all sorts of different poets and styles and eras and love every single one of them. Maybe not. Maybe I've just made someone's bus journey a little more interesting. But that's pretty good too. Thank you.